Yes, I went to the biggest book fair in the Southern Hemisphere. At least that's what they tell me. And well, things got a little bit out of control. So just what is this book fair that I speak of? It is the an biannual, twice a year, Lifeline Book Fest. Now this is in Australia and they have it in every city. It is enormous, let me tell you, it's so big. So they have three rooms. Uh, the first room, my favorite room, is the uh, high quality section and where they have all the rare books and out of print. And that's where most of mine come from. There are so many, so many beautiful old books there. And then the second room is the $2.50 section and they're all broken up into categories again. This is a whole different section, everything's $2.50. Then they have a whole nother section and everything is just $1. Of course, you might guess that my favorite is the high quality section and the rare books and out of print. Lifeline here in Australia is a charity organization that all the money raised for this event actually goes to their crisis center call line. And it's the 21st year that they've been running this. It is crazy. So if you're in Australia and you have not actually heard of the Lifeline Book Fest yet, I don't know where you, what rock that you might have been living under. I'm going to link up their um, info below so you can check it out and see when it might be hitting your city next. Of course, I'm going to show you all the fun fashion and sewing books that I got because oh, let's be honest, that's half the fun is the show and the tell. And I know that you always want to see what I get. So first up, I got this. Let me see. This is actually not in any particular that I found them. It's just in the order of my big giant pile of books right here. This one is the Pictorial Encyclopedia of Fashion. It has over 1,000 photographs. So it's quite a thick, thick book. Um, an older one is a sort of history of fashion in pictures. And it goes into quite a lot of detail. So there's quite a lot of text in this book as well. Let me read you something here about this book. It says fashion and history have always walked hand in hand for one is a mirror of the other. I love fashion history books and learning about history and fashion and how it relates to life in the times. This is a very, very thorough book at the first half goes through pictures, sort of in like a chronological order of, um, you know, since clothing was invented um, through to obviously modern times, modern times of the printing of this book in Nine, 1968 uh, and then the back section actually goes through um, pieces of history in like undergarments and then through formal costume and then through to um, you know like accessories and it's sort of categorized in different sections so throughout time so it's really really a delightful book but uh, I love these sorts of things for resources. Fashion in the 20s and 30s I don't think I really need to explain why I like this book so much. It's exactly that. If we have a look inside, it is just the most gorgeous pictures of fashion from the 1920s and 30s that you could ever think of. The illustrations and the photographs in this are incredible. It goes through everything. I find endless inspiration uh, from books like this. And this is a really, really good one. So. So happy to have this one in my collection. Keeping in the theme of uh, fashion history, this one is a cultural history of fashion in the 20th century. It is from Bonnie English. Now again, I did mention how much I love fashion history. Let me read you a little extract as to why I was interested in this particular book. The 20th century saw the effective end of haute couture and the rise of pret-a-porter and finally the triumph of street fashion. A cultural history of fashion in the 20th century unravels the complexities and contradictions behind these changes to chart the history of modern fashion. So this is right up my alley. This book, uh, hopefully, will kind of go into detail and talk about why changes in fashion occurred and how that sort of translate against life at the time through the 20th century. I find this so fascinating as what happens in the world at the time, how that affects dress and what clothes we wear. Um, so anyway, so I look, really look forward to reading this one. It's no, not really a lot of pictures, this one's reading. Okay, now I did get quite a number of sewing books. 
Uh, I love collecting old and new sewing and fashion books. One of the biggest reasons is I don't think anyone has ever done learning sewing. It is like a skill that you continually will get better and better at and there's no one way to do anything so i love seeing other people's perspectives be it uh something you know someone else's perspective being modern or something that it was done in the past uh with older books it is a great way to still keep learning i will always be learning new skills new ways to do things and new ways to look at uh the fashion that I create. So I love collecting books are such a great reference um, for this. So I have quite a growing collection and I encourage you to do the same if you're into the same kinds of things that I am and want to keep learning and improve your skills too. So this one I found, this one is quite a uh, lucky little find. We have the the Vogue new book to better sewing. So this one's definitely from the 50s and um, is quite a lovely, lovely book. Illustrations in here are adorable. Now this one has in the front has information on sort of general sewing knowledge and then it goes through and it looks like it tells you how to make up different uh, patterns that obviously uh, Vogue must have made in the 50s and it goes through instructions on how to make them individually. Just really, really beautiful. I love, I love these old books. This one is a pictorial guide to modern home, the pictorial guide to modern home needlecraft. Uh, this is a great book. Uh, I haven't obviously read the entire thing yet. I've flicked through. There is fantastic sewing information, how to sew, how to adjust patterns, how to uh, like grade a block, how to do things on your, or your machine feet and everything. There's so much information in here. This is a really, really very thorough book. So this one doesn't have a print date on it, though the pictures look like mostly I see photographs in books like this from, you know, 50s and 60s onwards. But have a look at this blouse, right? That is so late 30s, early 40s. So, yeah, all the other illustrations of the, the fashion in here really are from the late 30s, early 40s time period. So I'm not quite sure when this one was printed. I know that at least when I went to fashion college, uh, the images and uh, sort of the, that, they, that we had in our textbooks were quite dated at the time. Maybe it's the same kind of case back then, though probably not as much, I would say. But anyway, it is a fantastic book. Doesn't matter what time it's from. Now, this is my modern sewing book that I got. It is uh, the Dressmaker's Handbook of Couture Sewing Techniques. This one is by Linda Maynard. I don't often get a lot of modern sewing books. Um, mostly I do look for the older ones, but there are the occasional uh, modern new, new prints that I love. Uh, I like to see how you know, information is presented um, these days. I'm used to looking at the old pictures, but not everybody can sort of translate that in their mind like I can. So I like to see what um, people are do like doing with modern photographs and what we technology we have to actually present the same information and how it's done. And of course, this one is on couture sewing techniques. So it's kind of right up my alley. I like things to be a little bit more high end and, you know, as I said, no one is ever finished learning, so there's always things to learn. This is lovely. So they go into how to do a couture dart, how to use different um, linings and interlinings, and really how to get those beautiful, uh, neat couture finishes and the look on all your garments. So this one looks like uh, I'll still even <laughs> learn a few things uh, from this one. So I look really look forward to this. Another oldie. This one is a Better Homes and Gardens sewing book. Now, I've never actually seen one from Better Homes and Gardens before. Um, this one is another, as I said, an oldie. Let's have a look. It was given to somebody in a 61, the nice little handwritten note. E yeah, definitely, I'd say 60s from the illustrations through here. But this is another quite a good book. So again, this one's reasonably thick, so it's quite thorough. So one of the things that really drew me to this book was these pictures through here. Uh, are the fitting adjustments and how to fit different fit issues and make adjustments to the pattern. 
So uh, I love seeing these and this will be really helpful for you if you're learning. So it's got, just got illust picture after picture of the types of fit issues and how to resolve them and then how to sort of um, what adjustments to make on the pattern. So I love seeing this in, um, you know, flat form like this and how they've presented it is fantastic. It goes through um, fabric, it goes through how to sew, curve, necklines, all sorts of different things, cutting stripes, seam finishes, curved inserts, sleeves. There's just ooh, an ad. Wait, there's a separate magazine in here. I didn't even see this before. Okay, hang on, let's finish this book review. Um, yep, really, really great book. Let's look at this. <laughs> this one came with a free magazine. This is by Lucy Rivers, Dressmaking. Definitely from the same time period. And oh, how cute. So it's the this Singer ad. I love all these advertisements. This one's from Singer. How to make pattern adjustments. Night and day. We've got some beautiful evening frocks here from the 60s for sure. And again, more, some lessons. How to make adjustments to the patterns to create the styles that you're after. I have some of these zips in my collection. Oh, well, that's a nice little bonus, isn't it? All right, last but not least, the biggest book of them all. Here is my biggest tip. If you go to any book fair like this, you need to look for the books that basically this is all I saw. This, this is all I saw. There is nothing on it. These are the ones that you have to look for. These I have found be, to be the best, either missing their covers or they just look like you can't see anything. It's yeah, you have to look at everything, everything to get the good stuff. This one here is a huge, huge, big file of pictorial history of the silent screen. So this is just pages and pages of pictures from films from the silent screen era, 1900 through to the 20s. That kind of time period is perfect. So it's just picture after picture. Look at all these fabulous costumes. There is endless, endless inspirations for different outfits and how things were actually worn. And it just goes year by year, 1916, 1910. Uh, so yeah, I love these and just with so many pictures, if you're looking for hairstyles, these are fantastic. If you find anything like these from any decade, whatever hair sort of styles you're going with, or if you want to see lots of images of pictures from a certain time period, these kinds of books um, are fantastic. So I'm really loving this kind of time period at the moment. So this is great um, source of information for me right now. I do hope that you've enjoyed uh, seeing my little book haul here in what the kinds of things that I get and why I like them. So thank you for Lifeline Book Fest for putting on this event and having the opportunity to get such great rare books at really great prices as well. So I hope this encourages you to look at your used secondhand bookstore and go for the ones that are very, very inconspicuous and don't look like much. Remember, look at everything. Anyway, so like this video if you liked it and remember, leave me a comment below. Tell me which one of these is your favorite book, which one you want to find. I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye. <sighs> wow. Okay, I'm going to be really, really busy with all these books. <gasps> Good thing there's a lot of pictures in these and it's not all reading books.